Good morning, fifth grade. Today we're going to continue reading in our novel, The Birch Bark House. Before we get started, we have a fill in the blank summary. Get ready to fill in the blanks. Day Day departs on another hunting expedition. Food is being stored with care in a cache, a covered pit in the ground. Behind the winter cabin, the food stock is important, and Nokomis blesses the food and asks the creator of the family with, uh, and asks blessings, sorry, asks blessings of the family with prayers and offering of tobacco. Finally, the last night was spent in the birch bark house, and the family moves into town for the winter. Mama and Nokomis have both observed enough to have a sense of Omakias' gift. Nokomis starts asking Omakias if the plants she gathers and carefully tends to and administers to family ever talk to her. Amakia says no, but later admits to being able to communicate with her bear friends. Nokomis instructs her to listen to the bears with care. It is a cold night and Amakia waits in the dark, cold. Winter has arrived. Press pause to write down your answers and play when you're ready for the focus question. It says, what conflicts does the author develop in this chapter? How do these conflicts and challenges affect Omakias and her family or community? Our vocabulary words are flurry, and that is a small swirling mass of something, especially snow or leaves, moved by gusts of wind. And so there are snow flurries in this picture. The, the wind is stirring up the snow. The next word is frenzy. And that's a period of uncontrolled excitement or wild behavior. These birds are in a frenzy. And then last is solemn. And that describes an attitude that is not cheerful, but it's serious. Kind of like you would experience at a funeral. Alright, go ahead and turn the page. And we're going to be reading chapter 8 using our CSPS strategy. We're on page 107. The air in the cabin was brilliant. There was a flash to the light that told her it had snowed while she slept. The first snow. ay Pinch screamed, throwing off his rabbit skin blanket to run outside. Don't slide on the lake yet. Mama knew what he was up to and raced to the door after him to stop him from running straight out onto the ice. Although the cold was sudden and the snow had fallen thick and mysterious overnight, the water of the lake was still open just past a skim of delic delicate ice on shore. Already the air was warming up a little, at least where the sun shone brightest. Mama was worried that Day Day would not manage to make the crossing before the freeze-up. If he didn't, if he couldn't, he would have to wait in camp until the ice was solid and he and his men could pull their toboggans of stretched furs across to sell to the straight traders. Down the cleared path now, striding large, feather nodding in time with each step, came old Tallow. She held her long rifle loosely under one arm and growled her anine at Amakias as she tramped into the bush. Amakias called back an Old Tallow's hand went up in an abrupt way, though she didn't turn to look or certainly to smile. Her dogs followed at her heels, great and wolfish. The slinking yellow dog paused to turn and bare its broken brown teeth at Omakias, but she crossed her eyes at him and couldn't have cared less. First snow day always lifted her out of her skin, made her feel sharp and alive. The snow, not deep, softening, gleaming in a white cover over all she could see, 
Each branch was neatly outlined, and some still bore their leaves. Omakias and Angeline admired the intricate way that the snow trimmed the dried reeds of cattails and the brown furry heads that kept the tiny white mounds that made them look delicious. Minogo pugwugged. Angeline pretended to bite. Take this. Not only was Pinch annoying, but he had good aim. Just as Umakias turned, she caught a firm packed snowball on the side of her face. The snow stung. Pinch had packed a little stone in it. The wet snow licked her neck. Umakias ran at him without a word and threw herself on him, buried him face first in the mound of snow directly beside the path. Guy go, Pinch howled and leaped up, mad, packed more snowballs together and set up, set off after his laughing sisters. The more he ran on his short legs, though, the faster they galloped ahead. There was not a chance that he would catch them. He knew it and finally stopped. He slumped down near the side of the path, muttering to himself and putting more snowballs together until he had a big pile. At the heart of each, he packed a stone. Stones he hoped would sting his sisters until they cried. We'll stop right there because we have information about our characters. In box 1A, you would write, Omakius is very excited about the first snow and runs outside in the morning to play in it. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the quote. You can write down this quote um, in the middle of page 108. First snow day always lifted her out of her skin, made her feel sharp and alive. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready to keep reading. We're at the bottom of page 109. The girls walked farther into town, knowing Mama was busy, hoping she wouldn't miss them quite yet. It was exciting to live around other people again, and both of the girls wanted to find out if old friends had stayed to winter. They wanted to see if any new families had come to live near. Angeline was thinking of going to the Catholic Mission School, and she wanted to sneak by and see if anyone was there yet, studying the signs and marks that the priest made on the soft white stick on the big black wall. They walked to the edge of the schoolyard and then stood outside in the clear air in the sun breathing the fragrance of fresh wet snow and new bread crusted and warm. We'll stop right there because we have information about the setting on page 109. In box 2A, you would write, Omakius and Angeline walk into town to see their friends they hadn't seen all summer. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the quote. To write down this quote on page 109. The girls walked farther into town, knowing Mama was busy, but hoping she wouldn't miss them quite yet. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready to keep reading. Um, so now they're at the Catholic Mission School. We're on page 110. The sing-song reciting voices floated from inside the lock schoolhouse. Omakius was glad they were outside but Angeline's face was turned eagerly toward the sound of the priest's instructions. She was curious to know what was happening, but remembered Grandma's advice. Take their ways if you need them, she said, but don't forget your own. You are Anishinaabe. Your mother and grandmother are wolf clan people. Don't forget. Also, you sweat bath yourself clean every day. Even jump in the freezing lake, a thing that the Chumunkumang do not do. My girl, don't become like them. Just as though, just as the thought of Grandma made Omakia smile, there was a flurry of stamping feet as children of all ages burst from the back door, leaping wide, flinging themselves forward in a laughing frenzy. Thrilled with the prospect of new snow and ready to have their morning break, their fun, and then their small meal of smoked white fish and bread. I, Nashki, Angeline pointed in amazement. Stepping with easy care down the stairs of the schoolhouse, Solemn, carrying his tobacco pouch, his knife at his belt, was none other than Fishtail. 
What was he doing at the school? He did not join the children in their wild play, but walked directly from the school toward his camp. The show lived at the very edge of the village, hidden in deep bush. His place was built the old way. It was a birch bark house, but it was quite warm in winter because he knew how to heap the sides with snow, and he was an excellent trapper. The interior of his house, always lined with strung skins, hung with lush furs made into sleeping robes and red and white point blankets. His wife, Angeline's best friend, Tin Snow, was known as a fine bee worker. People said that she tanned hides so soft that they felt the skin like the slippery velvet that the trader sold. Let's find out what he's doing, whispered Angeline. He was visiting the school, said Amakius. Was there to find out? I don't think so. Angeline pointed to the book, the sheaf of Chamukumon paper, the evidence in Fishtail's hand, that he had another motive for attending the school. Okay, said Amakius, now curious. You go ask him. We'll stop right there because we have information about the problem. In box 3A, you would write, Amakius is curious about the Chimukuman, but she remembers Nokomis' advice to never forget her Anishinaabe culture. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the quote. You can write down this quote on page 110. Take their ways if you need them, she said, but don't forget your own. You or Anishinaabe. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready to keep reading. We're at the top of page 112. I, Angeline blushed, scared. No, I'm not. You are so. Challenged, Angeline jumped forward. She walked so swiftly after Fishtail, Amakius ran to keep up. But when she got to him, she walked beside him with no word. Didn't she know what to say? Amakius trotted behind just within earshot. What were you doing back there? Angeline finally had the courage to ask. I went to the preschool to learn to read the Chimukuman tracks. That way they can't cheat us with the treaties. Surprised and taken aback by this, Angeline and Amakius could only stand still and watch him as he walked swiftly, gracefully back to his home. They turned to go, still thoughtful. The sun was warm as summer, and by the time they returned, all, all the snow had melted from the heat. They took the same path back they had taken before, and as they neared the cabin, all of a sudden, Amakius felt a wet slap and a sharp sting blow on the back of her head. It was Pinch. Dancing with gleeful anger, foot to foot, his snowballs so watery only the pebbles at their centers were left in a pile at his feet. He nevertheless insisted on his revenge. I said I'd get you, and I got you, he yelled. I'm the warrior, Big Pinch. We'll stop right there because we have a solution. In box 4A, we would write, Fishtail reveals to Amakius and Angeline that he's learning to read English so he can make sure the Chimukuman are not cheating the Ojibwa in their treaties. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the quote. And for the quote, you can write down this quote on page 112. I went to the preschool to learn to read the Chimukuman tracks. That way, they can't cheat us with the treaties. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the paragraph. It says, how does Amakius respond to the snow? How is her reaction different from Mama's? Why are their reactions different? And so you'll need to go back to the beginning of chapter 8, um, where it talks about... And, the bottom of page 107, top of page 108, to get the difference in their reactions.